Today we're learning about Kerbal Space Program 2, so let's get right into it. Getting to orbit is one of the biggest challenges in Kerbal Space Program, so today we're going to overcome all of those challenges, obstacles, and barriers that stand between you and orbit. And I'd just like to take a second to thank the developer's private division for sending me over a product key. Because of you, I'm able to make a guide like this. But orbit isn't just a height. You also need to travel horizontally at a very, very fast speed. That way, instead of falling straight down, you fall at an angle. If this angle is low enough, you will miss the Earth, so to speak, instead of crashing back down into it. Before you can get to flying your rocket to orbit, you're going to need to build it. So let's talk about what you're going to need. There's four essential pieces to a rocket. The command module, your fuel, your engine, and a parachute if you want to get back down safely. And by the way, you can tell if this is the vehicle you're going to launch by looking for this green icon over the command module. That means that this project is what's going to be launched on the launch tower. And now if rocket science were that easy, everybody would be doing it, but it just isn't. There's lots of problems that we're gonna have to overcome, so let's talk about a few of them. One of the biggest problems with rockets is that engines are, generally speaking, either very powerful or very fuel efficient. That creates this dichotomy where you can't use the same engine for launch that you would want to use out in deep space. Another major problem is that rockets need to overcome both gravity and the atmosphere. While gravity thins out very, very, very slowly, and that's why you need to get into an orbit, you can't just float up there at 100 kilometers. But the atmosphere is a much harder wall to overcome. Luckily though, that one thins out pretty quickly. And if those two weren't enough, an even bigger problem is that fuel weighs a ton, many tons actually. And this weight requires extra power to push into orbit. Think of it this way, it takes a less powerful engine to push one kilogram of mass into orbit instead of 10,000 kilograms. This all adds up to a big headache, but luckily between you and I, we'll make easy work out of it. So to overcome these challenges, rockets are made up of multiple sections called rocket stages, and those are stacked on top of each other. The bottom, or first stage of a rocket, has lots of fuel and a very strong engine. The second stage has a smaller amount of fuel and a weaker, but very efficient engine. This way you can launch your rocket using that more powerful engine and then once you're done fighting the atmosphere you can drop that engine and all of the extra weight off of the rocket and switch to that more fuel efficient engine. That way you're not fighting all that extra weight and you don't need a rocket engine that's strong enough to fight the atmosphere. Now if you just want a very basic rocket which is often referred to as a sounding rocket, one that just goes up and then right back down, a single stage is okay, it's just not going to go that far. For orbit, Two stages are usually required. You can add different rocket stages with something called decouplers, which we'll talk about in a minute. So now that we've talked about some of the major problems and we've discussed how to fix those problems, let's get into designing our first ship. That's done in the Vehicle Assembly Building, or VAB for short. Really quickly, I just want to go over a couple of controls. You can right click to rotate the camera. You can zoom in and out with the scrolling wheel. If you want to move your camera up and down when you're working on a larger rocket, if you hold the scroll wheel down, you can move your camera up and down. If you get lost somewhere in the VAB and you can't find the rocket, you can press home or click this button to center the rocket on camera. And then X, or right clicking this button, changes your symmetry mode. We won't be using symmetry mode in this rocket build, but it is useful later on, so I just thought I would include that one. Building our rocket, we're going to first choose the command module. We'll choose this one here, and then we're going to snap a decoupler on there. These decouplers are what you're going to use to separate every individual stage of your rocket. So now we have our last stage, it's the command module, and we're just going to put a parachute on top right now before we forget. Next we're going to tackle the deep space stages. All you really need for this is a fuel tank, and that'll snap right to the decoupler, and then just a small deep space engine, and that'll snap right to the fuel tank. Now, finally, we can move on to the booster stage, or the first stage. We're going to snap a larger fuel tank onto this one, because we're going to need a lot more fuel to get it up into space. And then we're going to snap a stronger orbital engine onto that. And that's going to be powerful enough to push our rocket into space. To make sure that we've got enough fuel and a strong enough rocket engine, we're going to check two statistics. And that is delta V. That's the amount of fuel that you have. I would recommend if you're starting out to not approach getting to orbit with less than about 35 to 3700 delta V. The other one is the thrust to weight ratio. If your thrust to weight ratio is less than one, your rocket engine is not strong enough to fight both the atmosphere and gravity, 
and so even once you light your rocket engines, your rocket will stay put because it simply is not strong enough to fight the atmosphere. There's one more thing we need to look at in the VAB before we move to the launch pad, and that's our staging. This is set before a rocket flies and can be changed over here. In this case, we're gonna work from the bottom up. You can drag and drop rocket parts from one stage to another, and if you need to add another stage, you can do so with this plus button here. If you need to subtract a stage, all you have to do is just click here and delete it. So our bottom stage is gonna be the main engine. Once the main engine is empty, the fuel is all gone, then we're going to ditch that engine. The engine and fuel are gonna drop back to earth and we'll no longer have to push all of that extra weight. And instead, we're gonna switch to our second engine, which is a much more fuel efficient engine. That's gonna be the next stage here. That engine's gonna put us in a stable orbit. It's also what's gonna perform our deorbit burn. But once we've re-entered the atmosphere, we will no longer need it. So we're gonna decouple that as well. The very last stage is going to be the decoupler and the parachute. I put these in the same stage so that I don't forget to activate the parachute. Now the rocket's built, we know it can fly and it's got enough fuel to get to orbit, and we know our staging is correct, let's move right out to the launch pad. There's a couple controls I want to go over before we jump into the launch. Spacebar starts the launch sequence and stages your vehicle. To control the directions of your rocket in flight, you're going to be using W, A, S, D, Q, and E. This is really difficult to wrap your head around because rockets don't always fly in the same plane. They have to go all different directions. So W and S don't mean the same thing after you've rotated your vehicle as they do on the launch pad. This really takes some trial and error to get used to. But for now, we're gonna talk about what these buttons do immediately after your first engine starts up and you've only traveled a foot. A and D will tilt you east and west. W and S will tilt you north and south. And Q and E will rotate your vessel. I really don't recommend using Q and E until you've become really well acquainted with how to fly a ship in space. Throttle controls are next. Z sends your ship to full throttle, X turns your throttle off, left shift subtly increases your throttle, and left control subtly decreases your throttle. And finally, R turns stability assist on and off. Now it's tempting to look at the ground and use the planet as your point of reference when you're getting to orbit, but there's a much better tool to guide your navigation throughout the flight, and that's the nav ball. This symbol is your rocket, and the directions which the line point are what A and D control. Since your ship can change velocity in any direction, a ball is required to show all the different directions it can travel. At one time though, you can only see 180 degrees of this ball. When you're looking at the ball, if you're pointed in the blue direction, you're going up and away from the planet, and if you're pointed in the brown direction, you're going down. There is a line that goes 180 degrees around the circle between the brown and the blue portions, and that's where the horizon is. That's going to be very important later on. For most rocket flights, we're going to be using a gravity turn, which requires us to turn at the 90 degree angle. So all we're going to need for the ascent is essentially the D arrow key, at least for a little while. And that brings us to launch. We're ready to fly our ship. Now remember, to get to orbit, we need to go up, but we also need to go sideways very quickly. So we're going to do something called a gravity turn. These gravity turns are the most efficient way to get to orbit. This is a skill that's worth mastering. It's going to open up the doors for you. You'll be able to go to different planets and eventually even different solar systems. It's really important that you get good at gravity turns. So when you launch your rocket, you're going to fly directly up and you're gonna continue in this direction for a very short amount of time. If you start turning too early, you're going to run out of fuel before you get out of the atmosphere because you're going to waste fuel burning through the atmosphere. But if you start too late, waste fuel adding additional horizontal speed. That being said, when I'm talking to newer players, I always recommend starting your gravity turn a little later because you can recover from that. And if you're just trying to get to orbit, you don't need to optimize things as much as if you were trying to go way out to like Jewel or some far away planet. Now, if you run out of fuel halfway through the atmosphere, you're just going to crash back down into the ground and there's really nothing you can do about that. So we're going to start the gravity turn at a height greater than 3000 kilometers and when your vehicle is going faster than 100 kilometers per second. Now the gravity turn is a subtle change in direction, using the D key to pitch over towards the horizon. This is a slow turn that happens over time, not all at once. And this means keeping your ship above 45 degrees until you're 15 to 20,000 kilometers above the surface. Now you're gonna keep firing the engines at max throttle until your apoapse, or the highest point your rocket will travel, is greater than 80 kilometers. That's just above the point where the atmosphere ends. So you no longer have to worry about the atmosphere slowing down your vehicle 
vehicle whilst you're in orbit. So once your apoapse is above 80 kilometers, you're gonna cut off your engines using X. Let's take a brief pause to talk about the staging really quick. No two gravity turns are ever gonna be the same, so your fuel is never going to run out at the same time. That being said, as soon as your first stage runs out of fuel, like it has here, you're going to stage and switch to your second stage, which has your deep space engine in it. And if that happens before you get to space, that's fine, just keep on motoring up to the atmosphere. Let's get back to the flight. So at this point, we've gotten our rocket to space. Now we just need to circularize the orbit so it doesn't hit the atmosphere and fall back down to the planet. To do that, we're gonna have to wait until about 15 to 20 seconds before we hit the high point in the orbit known as the apoapse. We're going to pitch over fully towards the horizon so our ship is at zero degrees. You're gonna wanna be just below the prograde marker on the nav ball. Prograde is a fancy term for the direction a ship is traveling in. Once we're pitched towards the horizon, we're gonna hit full throttle. And now if you push M to go into the map screen, you'll notice that our apoapse is traveling away from us. It'll be moving slowly at first, but eventually it'll start traveling faster and faster. Eventually you're gonna start noticing the AP point moving away from you faster than you're moving towards it. If this distance gets too extreme, you're gonna wanna stop your engines using X, and wait until you're a lot closer to that AP point before you start throttling up again. We're gonna rinse and repeat this until something called the periapse, or the lowest point in the orbit, reaches 80 kilometers. You've successfully reached orbit when both the apoapse and periapse, also known as the highest and lowest points of the orbit, are both above 80 kilometers. At that point, there is no longer an atmosphere to slow your vehicle down and you will continue to travel in that orbit indefinitely. This is a great time to step back and congratulate yourself because you have just shattered one of the biggest barriers that Kerbal Space Program has, getting to orbit. So I'd just like to say, well done, good job. You can stay in orbit as long as you want. The only thing that's left now is to get your Kerbal back to Kerbin safe and sound. So to do that, you're gonna have to point your ship retrograde, which is essentially just making your ship point backwards. That way, when you throttle up your engines like this, you don't speed up your rocket, you slow it down. And that's going to decrease the size of your orbit until eventually you head back into the atmosphere. Now there is a sweet spot when you're deorbiting, and it depends on how high of an orbit you're entering the atmosphere from. If you re-enter at too steep of an angle, your ship is going to get too hot during re-entry and it will actually burn up and disintegrate. Likewise, if you re-enter at too low of an angle, you're going to burn off all of your horizontal speed up in the upper atmosphere and then you're just gonna drop like a stone towards the earth and the same thing happens. Your ship just burns up because it hits the thick atmosphere while it's going too fast. So you just need to find that re-entry angle sweet spot. And while you're learning how to judge these re-entry angles, make liberal use of that F5 and F9 button to save and reload your game. It might be a little cheesy, but it's not worth the headache. I find that when re-entering from a low curb in orbit between 80 and 250 or so kilometers, that a re-entry angle of attack should consist of a periapse of around 30 kilometers. That was a very complicated sentence, but basically what that means is you need to burn full throttle in the backwards direction, which we refer to as retrograde, until your periapse reaches 30 kilometers. Then you can perform your final stage and ditch that fuel tank and engine. The command capsule can handle re-entry a lot better than an engine and fuel tank can. The heat and pressure are very tough. Also, the command capsule is aerodynamically designed to remain pointed retrograde to slow down your ship in an appropriate manner so you obtain the softest landing possible. Long story short, just ditch the engine and fuel and land with only your command capsule. It's a lot easier. Now, all you have to do is wait. Your Kerbal is gonna touch down softly and you've completed your first orbit and deorbit. Congratulations. And hey, I hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like to check out a few of my other videos, there's a channel link here now and make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on your way out, and I'll see you in the next one.